kommer här. Hello everybody, I'm uh, Per Bergsten and uh, normally I speak Gotlandish, but uh, we decided to make this presentation in English, so I hope that's okay for everybody. No one objecting, so I hope they understand it. Um, so I, uh, I run a company that I started in, in 2009 and uh, we are connecting different things to internet by wireless radio connections. Uh, that's the, the simple uh, explanation. Um, but we, we have um, moved up one step. We're using the data also that we are getting from all these devices. And um, we have then decided to go into industry and to help uh, supporting the, the digital transformation that is now happening in the, in the industry and where we are able to, to follow, monitor physical things that are moving in the business processes. So for instance, the, um, uh, forklifts or uh, pallets or um, the material that's being transported or even the people for safety and um, statistics also. Um, and then sometimes for fun. So the basic thing, we try to bring this information of the, the physical uh, flow up to the business system. Because today, um, many of the big companies, they, they have a little bit of idea of when to order new material and how much they really have in stock. But they don't really need to know where it is. Where is all that material that is floating around in the factories and are on the way to, to the factory and are, are supposed to be consumed by the assembly station, the, the big uh, expensive robots that they have invested billions of dollars in. Um, and, and, they are, and, and sometimes they are surprised that they are standing. Why are they standing still? Well, they didn't get the material in at time. So that's, this is a really huge problem. And uh, there's uh, been a lot of investments on doing the automation of the, of the assembly. But how to handle this flow of material, that, that is very manual. So that's why we uh, think we can solve that problem. And we are doing that by now working with very big companies in the industry. Um, so we, we are inventing a lot of technology. Of course, we are... Uh, a technology company very much and uh, we've got a lot of prices for, for that uh, red herring um, 100 in Europe and then then they said that we are one of the 100 hottest companies in the world so we got that price and then we got the price from new technique that we're one of the 33 most interesting in Sweden also after that so uh, and then we listed uh, the company on uh, Nasdaq First North, just before Christmas. The very last company to, to get listed uh, last year. <coughs> um, so we have the vision here that we will be the company that will handle this information flow uh, and be the, be the um, market leader in this area. Um, uh, the technology is uh, called uh, Real-Time Location Services, RTLS. Um, we're also using GPS outdoor, but the problem with, uh, with the GPS is that it doesn't work inside. And uh, these buildings, uh, the factories, they are very big, many uh, ten thousands, hundred thousands of square meters. So if you want to know where the things are, you cannot use GPS. Our system then is, is complementing sort of the outside technology GPS with then sort of inside uh, GPS. But it's not GPS, it, it makes the same feature. And, and um, uh, that is commonly known as uh, RTLS, real time location services. 
So we think we can become the market leader in this. This is a market that is right now very, very little. We are building the market and we are getting confirmation that there is this need. So we, we are now in trials with, uh, with a lot of these uh, big companies, how to integrate this. Um, I should mention also that, uh, that we listed the stock option here uh, just um, this week also. So I guess all of you now interested in, in, in shares uh, have heard about Internet of Things. And uh, that is really everything and, and nothing. It's like when Internet came. It's just that now where all the things will be connected to internet. Um, and so it's just the technology. So you have to find a relevant application. And we are already working with sort of selling modules to this market that is exploding. Uh, the target to be 20, oh, this is disappeared. It should, should say 20 billion units uh, by 2020 there. So a lot of, a lot of units. We are supporting that market with sort of as a technology partner with modules, but the, the, the new business that we are building here is the services business where we provide a service to the companies of um, showing on a map or a service on how they are using their equipment based on the, this technology as, as our own service. Um, so we have started as a company selling small modules, wireless modules, and we're continuing to do that. But if we look at the value of hardware, I mean, what is the value according to Gartner, now McKinsey here, what is the value in, in the whole Internet of Things? We can see that added services is much more valuable. So, so the, the value chain here, hardware, uh, connectivity, and services, we started with doing the hardware. And then we have, since 2009, developed a lot of software to do connectivity for a lot of companies, like uh, LG's air condition. LG is number one in the world. We connected their uh, air conditions to internet um, and then connected it to, to smart grid. Um, we have done uh, robot uh, connectivity. We have done uh, thermostats, so, so a lot of smart home things. But over the last years, we have moved over to try to provide a service here, which, again, is the big value. Um, but we're continuing to be also a technology company, selling the modules to all the other guys doing an, an application and that want to uh, have a connectivity because we are experts in wireless connectivity. Um, so this is explaining that, yes, we moved from selling modules and added something that we call now a business area enterprise. So connectivity is where we sell the modules. That business area is still there. And, and um, uh, we all have a new generation uh, coming out. And I will show a little bit later what's happening there. That's very exciting now. But the high value is... Um, again, in the services, and you cannot develop applications for everything. So again, we selected to, to, to be the one that are leading on indoor positioning for industry. So we have now sort of three um, business areas here, connectivity for the modules, labs is just in the middle doing the development internally and externally if someone wants to have a turnkey solution, which we also can do. Enterprise is where sort of where we have brought in the money and are consuming the money to develop this area, uh, technology and pilots and, and um, um, marketing and sales activities. Um, so again, a lot of, lot of uh, money is planned to be uh, generated because of the Internet of Things and we selected a um, manufacturing here because that area is, is by, by its own uh, estimated to be a very big part of the Internet of Things value. 
Uh, and again, we were not looking at adding value, not just adding technology. So how do we do that? How can we do GPS indoor, which is not GPS? So what is it? Well, we have our own infrastructure then. So you can see this is sort of simulating the GPS satellites that are going around the world so you can get the coordinate. Uh, instead, inside, we are putting up our own small satellites. We call them sense points. Um, and it's not GPS uh, radio or protocol either. Uh, we have, um, we're basing this on Bluetooth, BLE, and ultra wideband. Because with ultra wideband, we can get the position down to a decimeter accuracy, which is uh, very good and, and makes it possible for us to follow things much more accurately and and um, it's the flow that we, we try to analyze, not just uh, an individual position. Um, so we are then tagging the different things, the tools, uh, the pallets, uh, the forklifts, and then these are sending radio beacons just to like this to, uh, to everybody. And we are then collecting them here and sending the information about the beacons to our server that is then calculating the position. But not, again, not just the position. We're calculating uh, the, the direction, the speed, how many, um, how long are they in, in one, one zone. Um, so we can then start to analyze how is different assets utilized. How much are they, are they used? Do you need to have all those forklifts? If you have 1,000 forklifts, but we can show that they were only utilized to 60%, well, then you can remove that, uh, those 400 forklifts from your balance sheet because they show up on the balance sheet there every year. Well, you need to serve them also, so there it's an additional cost, uh, and you need to have people running them. And that is even a bigger cost. Um, so, the next thing here is we can increase the production flow, and that's very important. How do we do that? That's because we can identify the different buffers where people are piling up um, uh, material. So, if you don't need to have all those piled up, well, then you get a faster lead time. And, of course, we can show where are most of the bottlenecks and, um, and, and show that the flow is, is uh, slowing down always at this particular point. So those, those things are very important to Im improve uh, the whole production and remove the, the um, binded capital. Um, and of course, to utilize our value <laughs> to get the information out there, we have integrated this with SAP and I don't know why we don't get in the full picture here. I will try to give you the full picture, but, but this picture is missing a little bit on. Um, but this should say SAP there. So we have integrated with SAP. And I have a short movie. Just um, see if this is working. If you have audio on there. So up here you will see our visualizer, and this is SAP, the, the world's most used business system. Hi, I'm Raj Patel with HND Wireless of Sweden. HND has been leading the IoT revolution since 2009 and is now proudly launching GAPS, Griffin Enterprise Positioning Service for Industrial. bottlenecks because pallets, racks are missing or stacking up high in the wrong places. Would you like to increase production throughput and asset utilization for forklift trucks, pallets, racks, retainable transport packages? GAPS, Griffin Enterprise Positioning Services is the solution. With GAPS, you can track and monitor the movement of your key assets, materials and pallets 
in real time into your ERP software. Here we are demonstrating the use of gaps in an automotive production environment. The little train is carrying racks with car doors from the receiving area to the assembly line. At the assembly line, the racks or returnable transport packages are unloaded, the car doors are fitted to the cars, and then the empty RTPs are sent to a stocking area. Uh, Gaps for industry is already pre-integrated with SAP and can be customized for your particular needs in collaboration with SAP business consultant partner suite. To digitalize your production and business processes and take it to the next level for better efficiency, profitability, please contact HND Wireless. Thank you. So what we're showing here is that we are able to follow the train down to the, the track level, uh, so within a decimeter, that is the accuracy of the system. We can also identify that when it arrives at different places here, it doesn't show really good here, but it shows up here that we are sending the information over to SAP. SAP is, is a huge, big system designed in, in Germany and used by roughly 80% of all the manufacturing companies in, in the world. Um, so here, but it's, it doesn't really know real time. So someone have to sit there and, and put in the information. And what we do, we automatically update the, the different storage uh, points that are in, in the business system. Uh, so it, it saves that part and makes th then the, the sort of the decisions that you can make based on SAP when you need to order things more accurate, which reduces the, the, the capital, again, uh, that you need to buy the material. Um, so that is what we're showing here. We're also then showing in real time the flow uh, that we don't send over to SAP, but we show that to the people responsible for handling the internal logistics. So those are the people that think that they have been underfunded uh, internally because all the money have gone to the robots. So the people handling this logistics, making sure that th this flow is working, they, they think this is great. So they want to look at our systems. Um, oops. So just a, a very short view on, on the system. It's a very, very big, complex system. We have developed it over many years, and it consists, of course, of a lot of radio stuff here, protocols, talking to our cloud system that we built on Microsoft Azure platform, which means that it doesn't run or on our computers. Uh, we don't try to support uh, the big companies with our computers. It runs in the cloud, and many of the big companies already use services where it's running in the cloud, supported by Microsoft Azure, but we also have the possibility to put it locally. But it's not just the position uh, that we want to provide. We want and uh, we are developing services on top of this. So we are able here to show, to, to, um, to have a service for asset management where we're showing the utilization. Of course, we show also how to find different, different assets in here, seek and find. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's a utilization that is important um, and to save, save time. We also have a, a module here for fleet management, showing where the trucks are, uh, I mean the forklifts, and, and how, how much they are used and, and if they start to crock, crash into each other uh, and so on. Uh, and also coordination between the new robotic, robot um, trucks and, and the forklifts. That, uh, that is a huge problem uh, because those robots, they don't really know that there is no a forklift down in that corridor. So they go in there anyhow. So there is a need for this coordination, which we can provide because we know where everything is. And if we also get the information from the uh, customer system on the material, what is put on the, uh, the racks and the pallets, then we can offer the production logistic part where we are then uh, calculating how much material you have at the different uh, places and, and the flow of it. And that's when you start to, to save money. So 
uh, how much money can we save? If we, if we implement this at, at um, for instance, one of the uh, uh, vehicle companies in Sweden, if we start to say that, okay, we can reduce the manual handling by 10%, say, and, they, and, and the number of people working in, in the logistics is with a little bit low calculated. If we save 10%, while well it's 40 million, doesn't sound that much. Um, of course, we can improve the safety, which is more than money. I mean, there is another dimension. You don't want people to be uh, hurt. Um, but it's not so much money. But if we start to look at if we can have better utilization of these assets to start with, the racks, the pallets, the, the forklifts, uh, that particular company have around 2 billion Swedish kroner just in these assets, in the balance sheet. So if we can improve the utilization just by 20%, I mean, many, many statistics are showing 30, 40%, but say that they are already very good, but they, they should be able to save 20%. That's 400 million. So that's, that's much, much more money. But if we then start to look at, okay, if, say if we just can save 2% of the material, and that particular company, Volvo, is buying material uh, at of, of roughly 100 billion per year, or more actually. So if we just save 2% of that, that, that is uh, 2 billion Swedish kroner in potential savings here. Uh, and we also said, okay, the system can also improve the capacity because it reduces the lead time. The problem they have had the last two, three years is that they cannot ship enough trucks out to the market. So they are losing uh, the or losing orders. So instead, if they had 1% more capacity, they would then be able to sell 1% more because they could ship it. So that's even, even more because they have a revenue of 300 billion. So this is very s sort of high level in principle. It's not based on any numbers official num well it's just based on official numbers from from their annual reports <coughs> but it shows the potential here and of course this doesn't happen over one day we have to start with the demonstration meetings and and then uh, pilots proof of concepts um, and that's where we are right now so you probably figure out by now that our focus is the manufacturing industry here, all these companies. And Sweden is very good in that sense. Sweden have a lot of very successful industrial companies. Um, of course, we can use this in transport logistics. We can use this sort of positioning system in a lot of areas. Uh, one area we started was actually Exploria, which is Europe's largest entertainment uh, park, uh, indoor entertainment. Um, and I, I will show you just a picture on that. But, but the main thing is that this is where we do our investment. And that's, I think, a very long-term investment. Um, when they start to use this, they will use this forever. Uh, well, we will continuously improve the system. That's why we sell it as a service also. So I, I will not show this video because I don't think we have the time. No, we're limited. Yeah. So you can see this on our, our, our YouTube channel. It's, it's really fun. It's, it's um, um, the biggest um, in indoor play center in Europe. It's in Stockholm, and we covering here uh, 20,000 square meters indoor with our uh, RTL system called GEPS. And um, this, the play center can get a lot of statistics here on visitors and where they, where they spend the time and so on. So a lot of business information. Uh, and the parents think it's great because they can sit and drink coffee and, and they even take a lunch there. But with that, based, based on that, we then went to the industry because then we could show that we have a system up and running. It is our first commercial customer. 
And we then went to Cromo, who is the second largest uh, tool rental company in Europe. It's number one in, in Sweden, and Sweden is also their biggest market. So we then installed this in their um, uh, depot in Gothenburg and are able then to, s to collect a lot of statistics there. And the, the people working here, uh, they are getting the information directly in the hand on where are the tools and also when there are tools coming here being this is outside, this is the inside the building. So when they come and return outside, they get the notification directly in their hand. So they're saving a lot of time and the management get a lot of statistics. Um, so based on that, we then went to Scania. And we actually started this pilot in June Hi. last year. Welcome to the latest in smart factory innovations. Scania has been exploring the benefits of using GEPS, Griffin Enterprise Positioning Services from H&D Wireless. With GEPS, we can constantly monitor and manage in real time our fleet of robot tugs and material handling carts used across our factory. We can use this data to optimize utilization of expensive assets, improve efficiency, while ensuring safety and security of our employees. Tracked items are visualized in easy-to-use software on PCs, tablets, and smartphones. Besides position, we can monitor the condition of the tracked asset, letting you know if it has been dropped or exposed to extreme temperatures. Worker productivity is increased because they can quickly locate the necessary tools for proper assembly using GEPS equipment dashboard. Less time is wasted as the factory keeps humming and throughput increases. GEPS is not just for monitoring things, it can be used for people too, by having them wear vests that can be individually tracked. GEPS technology and visualization dashboard allows the factory floor to be flexibly configured into geofenced zones so that alarms can be triggered to ensure safety compliance and security within the factory. Please contact h and Wireless to discuss how GEPS can help you take your smart factory to the next level. Thank you. So here you can see some of, <coughs> you can get heat maps, <coughs> how much uh, of people have been over there. And um, well, this is the visualization tool. Um, so based on that, Scania then, whoop, then uh, approved that we are now uh, approved to start planning and discussing real pilots, I mean commercial pilots. So they are have, have now classified us as uh, ready for pilot, with which does not mean that we have got a pilot uh, design win yet. Uh, but we have got that on another place, which we press released actually yesterday. Um, but they, they put in another order. So we have installed this now at, at KTH. Uh, so it's a collaboration between Scania and KTH Södertälje. Uh, and if you look in our Twitter and our news flow, you will see that the last week, the Royal King Carl Gustav um, did um, actually, what uh, in in Vigde, in, uh, he started. What would you say? In Vigde, yeah. <laughs> no, well, he was there and opening the KTH Södertälje, which is the collaboration between the uh, uh, Scania and AstraZeneca and uh, and KTH, and. They were looking at the at, um, uh, robot go, uh, moving around there with our positioning. So that's what, uh, why I wanted to say that. Um, so we're very happy. They are very interested in this, and, and there are many discussions going on. So I, I do want to mention just a few more things about our old business, sort of the connectivity, the modules. Uh, over the last uh, just six months here, we have gone from two design-ins to 13 design-ins of our new mm -hmm. product. So uh, for those who are following the, our, our stock and revenue, we have um, 
sort of we put all the effort in, in doing this new service and, and the solutions. But when we got the funding, we also then continued to support the connectivity business with a new product generation. And that product generation is now being designed in at, at 13 customers. It was two in January, now 13. And several of them have also started to place production orders. So we are starting production now here end of, of Q2. Well, that's June. That's uh, this month even uh, in China and starting to ship. Um, so it takes a long time to design in this GEPS solution, which is, of course, what, what we hope for getting, getting much higher uh, revenues and, and turnovers and also margins. Uh, it's a very complex system. That's why it takes a long time to, first of all, convince the people <laughs> they need it uh, or uh, does it solve their problem. They know they have problems. They, they just didn't know that there was a solution. So, so we, we have worked a long time then with this um, play center solution and we have uh, had this train demo going at SAP's uh, user forums. But only one year ago, we started to meet the right people at Scani and other, some other companies, we can't say the name on. And we started to get the orders and build a, a demos and, and pilots here with uh, Scania. And only this week, we, we actually then got an order from another company that we cannot say the name, but we are now uh, doing a commercial pilot with. Um, I also want to mention that our tags are not only now usable indoor, they are also usable outdoor. So we're among the first in the world to have tags that are following the things bo both indoor and outdoor with the same tags. And when they come outdoor, well, then we run over the cellular network and we are then have implemented a new standard called narrowband IoT, which everybody thinks will be a huge up, up um, ramp for, for Internet of Things. So we have that technology and we're using that as part of the GIPS. So I, I will not go through much more because... You One, two minutes, then we go to questions. Okay, you are very generous. Uh, so this is just my... I closed the door, they can't leave. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, so this is just my sh short background, and this also symbolizes the competence in the company because a lot of the, the guys, sorry, mostly guys, a few, few uh, women is working as engineers also, but um, um, many of them have been with Ericsson. I was with Ericsson. 14 years and then 1997 I set up my first company so always doing wireless connectivity as you can see but for different applications and and, and I managed to sell these companies and then set up this company and we've been running here trying to w not use venture capital uh, but our own money and then until we saw that okay we can now do this service that we need to invest in then we then we got help to uh, start getting funding uh, from from the uh, private equity uh, and then listing the company. So, a lot of good people. They, it's on also on the web page. A lot of experience, and again, we have shipped a lot of devices, over a million units. It took time because the business models have to. It's not just to get the data. I mean, people need to find out what, what kind of business can we, new, can we now do on this. And that has took a long time. Everybody has been trying different business models. Uh, but and Fall and Aeon, for instance, have tried to, to give out these uh, power switches. But no one is using that now. Um, <coughs> so there are uh, b new business models everywhere. And we have done a lot of different projects. Uh, uh, also, a fish spy is a camera to use when you're fishing. Uh, it's a nice video on, on our, our homepage for that, if you're into fishing. It's, well, it's still a good video. Um, so I will, unfortunately, not be able to go through the finance. But we have a, a good board here. Um, Peter from Clevester, he used to be analytical at uh, at Carnegie, uh, Carl used to be with Ericsson. He is now uh, at Sweet, that is one of the of the good SAP integrators. And again, we need to be in this ecosystem now, the new ecosystem, 
uh, with the big companies and and uh, sweet is is already supplying a lot of the big companies with integration support when they want to get new features into their business system like SAP and and Hans have actually been uh, advisor uh, and a business consultant with well all the big industry companies in Sweden and particularly with the uh, upper management in Södertälje. Um, okay, so a summary. We are have a world-class IoT solution, but the focus is now, what we have added on is the real-time location services where we optimize the business flow for, for the industry. And we listed just recently. And your chairman of the board was Håkan Djup. Hammar of Ericsson, Batis. <coughs> yes, and, and uh, as he explained at, at our annual uh, meeting, it, uh, it was a little bit going to be conflicting <coughs> with any potential collaboration we might have in the future. Uh, one of the leads in that you can say is that Ericsson have decided they will not sell, develop and sell devices themselves. We do that. So maybe we, we have, maybe we'll collaborate uh, in the future. Okay. Um, okay, just to do some quick questions. I, this is very, very interesting. I'm very interested in this myself. You heard about my cordless drill that I yeah, couldn't find. Yeah, and, and I will uh, come and help I, you find I it. I also have a boat. It's not a big boat, it's a day cruiser. But I did this myself in a consumer end way by taking an old iPhone and a SIM car so SIM card, I threw it in the boat, hit it in the boat, powered it, and I can use find my iPhone to see that the boat is where it's supposed to be and not towed away to, you know, wherever they might take it. Um, and there is so much on the internet. Ma many applications. Uh, yes. About this and tags like this. It's been, I think it's one of the more common crowdfunding things. But the question, I think, it's such an obvious gain why doesn't expensive boats, high-end cars, uh, electric bikes already have this? It's such an <coughs> excellent way to track them. And, you know, insurance companies, it's, it's very strange yeah. that it still isn't happening because it, it's been boiling for 10 years, 15 years. E exactly, exactly. Why? Uh, well, it has always been an interest to use uh, GPS for tracking fleet management, for instance. There, there has been a business case for it. Uh, so for every new business case, you need to see, okay, d is there technology there? Is there someone that can pay for it? And uh, do they want it? And so on. So we have selected our part of this sort of positioning business as the industry, and we focused on the application in the industry, which is, we think, under-digitalized, uh, and we're not just selling a tag, so you can't buy it. We're selling a service. So, because we think that it's the data that come out from this which will be the important thing. The big companies want to have an, uh, do the analysis themselves. We are, we are developing analyzing tools that will support them, but also we will have it as, as an, at a lot of different companies. So. So for every application, you need to sort of select your, um, I mean, you need to select application to and, and develop the application and provide it as a service. Um, so I think you should search for, you should Google, um, how can I find boat? I mean, my boat or, or someone selling that service. Um, because you can buy tags and put in yourself. I mean, you can put the iPhone there and you can look at it for one day and then the battery is out. So even the tags have to be optimized. So these tags will have a battery time of more than a year. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> the application, you have to select the market and the and application and, and what you want to offer. We offer it as a service. Um, and, and that's wha what we think will be, be um, the continuous payment uh, stream coming in there. Okay. So, so follow-up question on that is, is there enough barriers for a big industry and incentive for them to keep you there when 
Scania is a paying customer of yours. Uh, what's to prevent Google from coming in, selling $2 tags and just uh, giving them an interface and doing a cheaper version of, of you? Will that happen or will it not happen? Well, uh, that's a very, very good good uh, question. I mean, again, we have selected a market which is very high, high <laughs> entrance level. It costs a lot to come in there. Google is not in industry. I mean, have you heard Google being used inside any, any industry today? I, I don't think so. But of course, it could be. But still, they are not doing indoor positioning uh, in, in the way we, that we do here. We, they, they, they have no solution. They don't tell, sell tags. So, um, so that will take some time. Um, so we, we are hopefully being going to be the market leader in this before any anyone else can can do this but it, it is race we cannot just sit and or do, do it very slowly we need to focus and and deliver and and then the market need is there i'm sure question from the audience okay uh, so uh, yeah lots we haven't talked about but the time flies uh, yep Thank you, Per, okay. H&D Wireless. Thank you very much. Thanks.